Okay, how you doing? We're going to continue on this uh, episode of dealing with exponential laws. Uh, and the exponential law we're going to talk about now is something called the power law. Um, a power is no other than an exponent, but it wouldn't make sense to, to talk about exponential laws and call it the exponent law. So the other way we talk about exponents is called a power. And basically it just means what some group is being uh, raised to some exponential power. So, the power law is all based off of if you have some group with an exponent, and that's it. So you have to have grouping symbols with an exponent on it to be able to apply the power rule. Other than that, you cannot um, um, apply the power rule. And if you have an exponent on a parenthesis, it's always in outside on the upper right of the parenthesis. So, meaning that for me to even be able to apply the power rule, I must have some parenthesis with some exponent, okay, out here in the upper right. And if it's not in the upper right, then I don't get to multiply that particular group by that value. So that is something very important to understand, is that this has to have parentheses with some exponent outside, or it's just simply the product law if all your parentheses are connected through multiplication. So, if I take a look at this, okay, the power law states that it, I can multiply the exponents as a shortcut. This is just a shortcut. And the reason this shortcut is, is because if I take a look at the idea of what an exponent is, and an exponent tells me how many times I'm multiplying something by itself. Well, groups are something, aren't they? So if I put an exponent on a group, it tells me how many times that group is being multiplied by itself. So, for instance, we'll stick with this idea of fours, like I did in the last problem. If I have four squared, I now call this a group, okay? Four squared by itself is just a group, in parentheses is four squared, and I don't need the parentheses. However, if I now say I want to raise that power of, of that quantity of four squared to some power, and I say in this case, three. What I've now just done is I put an exponent outside of the group, which means how many times do I wanna multiply that group by itself? Well, this group is four times four on the inside. So what I wanna take here is now I wanna take three of those groups, okay, because that's what the exponent says, and multiply them together. So three of these groups, so I would have a four squared, there's one group, times a four squared, that's the second group, times the third group of four squared. Well, going back to the product rule, lo and behold, guess what I've got here? I've got, now I've taken the power rule and I've turned it back into the product rule. All of these bases are fours and numbers are bases. That's the number one thing you need to understand that an actual number is a base as well. So this four is a base, that's a four, and that's a four, and those are all bases, so guess what? They're all the same. So what does the product rule allow me to do? It allows me to add their exponents. Well, if I wanna add their exponents, I have a base of four. Adding the exponents, I have a two, a two, and a two. Two plus two plus two is six. So what I get here is four to the sixth power. And this whole shortcut came about because of this idea. If you take an exponent of some group, you're writing that group out that many times through multiplication. And then that took us back to the product law, which said, hey, I can just now add all the exponents of the common bases. Well, if I begin to take a look at this particular problem, I came up with four to the sixth power. Well, three and two can be connected by some sort of property, which is multiplication, which would give me six. So what the law states here is that I can take this three and multiply it by that two and keeping the base the same, important rule there, keeping the base the same. So what is ever inside the group and is not an exponent needs to remain the same value. And then I apply the exponent to it. So what I'm now left with is four to the sixth power because two times three is six. And what I get here is the shortcut of not having to write all of this out. Because if I had to write this all out and I made it like a 12, I do not want to write that out 12 times. To prove 
that this is going to occur, that you're going to get this phenomenon where the exponents just can be multiplied together. So, what I want to go through now is the, the, the understanding of that this doesn't have to be just one base in that group. The law shows it with just one base. But I just want to show it that you can have multiple bases inside. And what you need to know is that you're just multiplying the exponents of the bases inside by the power on the outside. So this has a, a generic form where A is just some value. And A can be a number, it can be a variable, and that's an important thing to understand, that A can be a number or a variable. What we were just doing was this property with an actual number base, not a variable base. So this, okay, now states that I could have A or B. So doing this same exact property, I would take the A's exponent and I would multiply it by what's on the outside. The B, I would do the same thing for it. Now, the important thing to understand here, and I can't stress this enough, that if that, that A can be a number, that B can be actually a, a, a number base, well, these could also be um, combined together. Like, that B could be an, uh, a variable base, and the A could have been a number base. So I can have a number base linked together with a variable base. And that is something extremely important to understand, that I can mix all these things together. So, what we need to take out of this is that even if I mix them together, I must hold true to what the property states, that whatever the exponent of that base is, is that's what I can multiply by the power on the outside. So let's put some um, example problems to this. So we'll start off light. We've already started off with the explanation of the fourth, so let's go into some variables. So if I have a problem that says x cubed, and I say to the fourth power, I don't want to write out x cubed four times because this is the group of x cubed. So how many of this group x cubed do I want? Well, I want four of them. Well, if I want four of those, then I would write out x cubed four times and then put multiplication symbols in between. What we just showed over here, that you, the quick, short, easy way to do it, is that it ends up being the same exact thing as that if I took this 4 and multiplied it by the exponent of the x's base. I am not changing the base on the inside. The base is still going to be an x. It's not going to be a 3x. It's not going to become a 4x. The base is what remains the same. It's the exponents that I'm worried about changing. So the exponent is a 3. I'm changing it by multiplying it by 4. So I now get x to the 12. So if I took x cubed and wrote it out four times multiplied together, lo and behold, I would have a strand of 12 x's being multiplied together. So I get x to the 12. So let's continue to expand upon this. Well, now what happens if I have, say, something like 2x cubed and I square it, okay? If I were to forget the variable was even in there, okay, and I were to cover it up with my hand, that says 2 squared. 2 squared is 4. You don't necessarily need to think about that number having an exponent. You can think about covering up all the variables and going, well, I've got 2 squared there. Well, 2 squared I know is 4. The other way you can think about this is, well, anything that doesn't have an actual exponent written, okay, is an exponent of a 1. So I can put this 1 that is hidden there in, and then I can go ahead and just multiply all the exponents. I'm still going to have the same basis. This 2 does not change into a 4 because of 2 times 2. This base of 2, I'm still going to write it, and I'm going to write it out and simplify later. You should never simplify your base until you have it written out with the exponents changed. So now I have 2 to the second power, and I have x. Well, 2 times 3 here is 6. Now I'm going to simplify this. 2 squared, if you typed into a calculator, would give you 4. And this would be 4x to the 6th power. 2 is a good example to use, but a lot of people misconstrue it when I say 2 squared. Because 2 times 2, which happens to be these two numbers, does make 4. So let's go ahead and use another example. And instead of using a... Uh, a 2, let's use, say, something like a 5. So I've come up with this property, and I'm going to say, instead of now using two bases, I'm going to use three bases, which means I'm going to use a number 5, which is a base, 
and I'm going to use a variable x, and I'll use a variable y. I'm not going to put an exponent written out on the x, but I'm going to put one on the y, and I'm going to say that that's 3. And then I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to say, okay, well, this is going to be to the third power. So what I've done here, <clears throat> first off, to be able to use the power law, I have to have a group that has an exponent on the outside of that parenthesis in the upper right-hand corner. So let's see. Do I have on this group an exponent on the outside of it and in the upper right? Yes, I do. So that allows me to use this thing called the, the power law. Other than that, I can't use it, and I would have to possibly use the product rule if I could use the product law. So now, again, thinking about it the two ways, if I covered up all the variables and their exponents, I have 5 cubed. Well, 5 cubed is 125. Or, if you're going to go ahead and do the way of multiplication. A lot of people, and I mean a lot of people, always do this, where they say, oh, this is 3 times 5 and give me 15, and then I have to go, no, it's wrong. You have to use, you can't change the base. So, you need to know that you are going to have a 5, you're going to have an x, and you're going to have a y. You can take all the bases without their exponents and rewrite them out here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to change the exponents of them because these laws only apply to changing the exponents. So the exponent on the 5, what is it? Well, if it's not written there, it's a 1. So this becomes a 1, and up here is a 1. So now this 1 changes into a 3 because 3 times 1 is 3. So this is now 5 cubed. This x has a 1 up there. So this 1 becomes a 3. And the y has a 3. Well, 3 times 3 is 9. And please note that I still have the 5, the x, the y, even over here. I have a 5, I have an x, and I have a y. Now I'm going to simplify my numeric bases if I can. Because if I know that I can type into a calculator 5 raised to some power, it will give me an answer. If you stuck x into a calculator, raised to some 3, it's going to come back to you and go, what the heck is this? So, if you type into the calculator 5 cubed, you'll get 125. So I get 125 x cubed y to the ninth power, and then I'm done. And the important thing here to know is this first step to the second step, that all I did was I wrote out my bases and then changed their exponents. So I hope that you understand that. And realize that all, you need to make sure that if you're a person who needs to do step by step, that you should write out this step here. That these five, the five, the x, and the y are still going to remain there. And then you're just changing the exponents. And then you can deal with things later. So, because the next video I'm going to talk about is combining the exponential law with the product law and putting them all into one problem. So... I hope that for now that you understand the power law and please don't try to do combination problems until you truly fully understand the product law and the power law separately. If you don't understand them separately, combining them is just going to be one big disaster. So understand them separately and then we'll come back and talk about what happens when you combine them. So I hope that helps for any homework that you're currently doing.